Hello wine lovers, Trophy Wine Hunter, welcome back to my wine channel. Today I'm doing a review that was voted upon by the, our, my viewers. I did a video about second growth wines, which I will put at the end of this video. And at the end of that video, I said um, I wanted, I had a poll that I wanted to see who, which second growth that I had, I could drink, or the viewers wanted me to drink, and the viewers decided on this wine. Brand Cantonec 2017. So I'm very excited about this because my impression of this wine has always been it's been an underachiever, but I haven't drank it for many years. So it's time to give it another chance. So let's start with the name of the wine. It is a second growth. And again, we can go back to my other video about second growth wines. Um, it's called Brand Cantonec, not Brain Cantonet. Um, so it's got a long history. It's um, started in the 17th century, the early 17th century. It was originally known as Domaine Golem Houston. And it was purchased in 1833 by the Baron of Bran. And at that time, it's actually called Chateau Gorse Guy. Um, interesting fact is that he, in order to purchase or fund this purchase of this winery, he had to actually sell his interest in another winery called Bran Mouton, which is the current day Mouton Rothschild. So, and at that time, I guess it was a fair trade because, you know, the quality of this wine was a second growth and the quality of Mouton was a second growth. But today, would someone make that trade? Probably not. But that's all in the past. That's life. So, um, he when he bought it, it was called Chateau Gorse Guy in 1838. He bought it in 1833, 1838. He changed the name of it to Bran Cantonet because he's the Baron of Bran and also the region where it's in is in Cantonet. So Bran Cantonet. Um, the history then goes on. Um, it got its second gross classification in 1855. It was passed on to the Wa family who at that time opened Chateau de Song. And then in 1920 was bought by a society and then in 1922 was um, bought by a person called Rakapat, Mr. Rakapat, and his son-in-law was Lucian Lurton. And Lucian, um, when passed away, uh, Fran one of his sons, Francis Lurton, uh, inherited in 1956. It's been in the Lurton family for now four generations and now currently managed by Henri Lurton. Let's talk a little bit about the winery. So if you recall from my other videos and the 1855 classification system, each growth sector, they were ranked in order of, not alphabetic order, but in order of um, their kind of price per bottle. So in the second growth, I think there was four, there's 14 second growths, 15 if you include Mouton. It was kind of down in the lower part of this brand Cantonet. So, um, but it's still a second growth wine. So the quality, that means the quality of the wine, the price per bottle in 1855 was quite high. I actually tend to think that this is a, as a, a, as a better uh, judge of quality than nowadays when it's more about money. In those days, every, everyone had money or didn't have money. So um, it would more be about the terroir instead of the technology and who owned it. Uh, to a certain extent. That's my kind of argument. So I, I do put some credence into the, the order that they were ranked in the 1855 classification system. The vineyard itself is about 75 hectares, but only uh, 45 hectares, which are the ones that are nearest the winery, are used to make the first wine. The other 30 hectares are made to use you to to make their second wine and their third wines which are a little bit more merlot based it is in the margot region and it's planted with 55 percent cabernet sauvignon 40 percent merlot four percent cabernet for franc franc one percent petit verdot and one percent carmomer and so they've been tr um kind of replanting the grapes and experimenting with grapes like carmomer and petit verdot as global warming and as the 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 whole um, earth and the wine uh, growing regions are um, warming, um, just experimenting with those things. So Carmen Mare was first used 
in their blend in 2011 vintage and Petit Verdot was first which was first planted in 2008 was first used in this vintage so it's kind of interesting um, and I guess uh, obviously with each year the blend is not the same as the mix in the vineyard so each year is a little bit different so we'll talk about this vintage in particular a little bit later just on. a little bit of more background about the winery I think it's known for the Margot um, softer aromatic silkier touch and I think that's why it was probably higher rated it's a second growth because again if you recall my other videos our taste buds have changed and in 1855 probably it was a lighter people liked it, a lighter type of wine a more aromatic wine a softer wine um, and nowadays our tastes are much more drier style and a little bit more alcohol content it has went through ups and downs um, and a lot of it has to do with um, just stylistically so what the original Lertons that did this this was uh, Francois I think he was a big innovator and at that time innovation meant a lot of processing like machinery right that would be the new thing but when you're doing that I think you lost some of the touch the human touch and I think what people have learned in in the modern times is um, with things like wine which are which is like an art form you do need that personal touch it's not about um, the mechanics and so I guess the knock on brand Cantonet between I would say the 70s and maybe the late 90s is that it was too mechanical austere um, to ref um, it wasn't soft and opulent like it was when it was rated as a second growth so I guess if you look at the history it's been up and down it obviously was a great wine in 1855 when it was judged probably went through was pretty good until about the 1920s when it was changed ownership to the society between the 20s and the 50s a little bit of ownership change um, still good wine and then with the 50s to I think the 90s well 50s 60s maybe have been pretty decent still the 60s to the 90s probably there's a lot of innovation but in the wrong manner it was more mechanical innovation like we should do things more mechanically with equipment and that probably kind of ruined the whole um, genre of this winery that's not what it should be done and then coming through in the late 90s with the current team led by Henri Lerton I think the wines have got much better there's been much more innovation but innovation in the in the sense that it's more went to um, uh, organic being more organic um, using you know upgrading their seller system um, so more and, and more hands-on approach so that's what I mean in terms of um, the in the um, innovation and so what the previous I guess uh, generation thought was innovation was actually I think um, detrimental to the wine and what the current generation have done is a little bit more uh, get the heart and soul back what do I mean by innovation so there have been two major changes to the winery in the last uh, 20 30 years one was in 1999 when they started to use smaller vats and then allowed for parcel by parcel vinification so more specialization instead of putting all your grapes into one big vat and then in 2015 they completed a, a renovation of their cellars and their vat rooms which is really important to be modern um, so that's really helped them get to a certain level and I think now they're finding their soul again and so you're gonna see with the more interest in Margot with the change of taste also we've started to now get away from the parkerization of wines and people are enjoying softer wines or more subtle wines um, this is getting more into vogue more money is coming and more attention coming to these wines they can uh, they have more money they can produce better things and so I think there's going to be a renaissance in the Margot region and I think one of the wineries that can benefit from this is Brand Candonet and you're seeing that their vintages are getting better and better in my opinion 
Let's talk a little bit about the wine itself and in particular the 2017 vintage. Um, they're much more and more organic in terms, and you'll see that with most wineries nowadays, um, everyone has realized that being organic has, um, has its benefits to the actual taste of the wine. And that I think was one of the drawbacks. Again, a mistake. Uh, I don't know if it's called a mistake, but um, wrong type of innovation for this winery. Um, they thought by being more um, innovative in terms of using more machines, going away from people and handpicking, that might be better. It was actually, I don't think, as good, and it turned their wines, it took away the heart of these wines. And really what Brand Cantonac at its best is known for is the aromatics, in particular the floral aromas from Margot region, the softness because it's got that Merlot base, and the longevity in particular in, in bad vintages. So for some reason, the soil or the terroir allows Brand Cantonac to do quite well in off vintages and particularly um, in terms of aging potential. Um, it's just something that happens. It's not, I don't know if there's a scientific way to explain that. So 2017, again, was not a tremendously good vintage. Um, some would say an off vintage, some would say a drinker's vintage. So in that year, the blend of this wine was 74% Cabernet Sauvignon, 21% Merlot, 4% Cabernet Franc and 1% Petit, Petit Verdot. And again, this was the first vintage that Petit Verdot was used in this blend. Um, okay, so here is the bottle. So again, it is Grand Class A, Grand Cru Class uh, 1855, Chateau Brand Cantonac, Margot and Henri Laton, who is the manager uh, of the winery right now. Beautiful cork actually, very, well designed very high end it looks to me and then the color i'm not sure you can see it on the video but this is a to me it's a beautiful ruby red color uh, i really thought that was attractive coming out of the bottle let's taste this wine and i'll let you know that i have had this open now for about three hours uh, put it in decanter and then drank it with a number of people and then i'll have it back in First thought I have is uh, the color coming out of this um, bottle is a beautiful bright ruby red color that is very stunning in terms of the color. So um, that's very positive. On the nose, I can smell oak. Um, I do smell floral elements, uh, but not like roses, more like violets and lilacs. Uh, but a little bit of uh, yeah, oak and floral elements, of course, with a dark fruit also. But I would say it's medium intensity in terms of the aroma, but definitely some flower, um, floral elements into this. So on the taste, it's still um, tannic, but not overly tannic. I wouldn't say it's years away, but maybe a little bit more um, time in the decanter would be helpful. Uh, the initial taste is more red fruit, like sour, like sour cherries. Um, and now it's coming into the more the black fruit as you taste a little bit more on with this wine. But good fruit um, profile, um, I would say medium plus acidity. Tannins are medium on this wine. It's got a little bit of spice on the taste, but a lot of red fruit and then a little bit of um, burnt toast on the end of this wine. Um, I think it would go really well with some food that would kind of flush out the tannins, the bitterness a little bit, and the um, 
and the acidity. Um, but it's a very bright wine in my sense. Um, it is strong. It's, I wouldn't say it's... Um, it doesn't have a lot of Merlot content, so it's not... I wouldn't say it's um, earthy or silky. That, that's not how I would describe this. I would describe this as more red fruit um, with a little bit of spice and there is an oak component to this. So I will have the wine spectator rating on this. I won't, I don't have it right now, but it's a quality wine, no doubt. Um, so I'm going to take one more taste before I give you my score on this. So I'll let you know that I did taste with um, a number of my friends. They all really enjoyed it as a light tasting wine. And I'll have to admit, I actually liked it a lot better when I first tasted it than I do now. The tannins are coming in and a little bit of the bitterness is coming in. So maybe it doesn't need that much aeration. Um, when I first drank it, it was only aerated very minimally. It was maybe like 30 minutes. And it was, I thought, tasted a lot better. Um, so a little confusing for me. I might need a little bit more um, experience with this wine. It's a little confusing to me. Um, I'm going to say, based on the tasting right now, 89 points, based on what I was tasting earlier today, 90 or 91 points. So somewhere between 89 to 90 points. But if I'm tasting right now, I'd say it's 89 points. Um, quality wine, I think it might be the vintage. It might be the timing of it. I need to air it a little bit more. I'm not sure. But um, it is a quality wine, no doubt. Uh, it's not a bad wine. And everyone that drank it with me when I first opened it really enjoyed it. Um, thought it was a very soft wine, very drinkable. Maybe not at the price. I'll have the price down uh, below, but maybe it was a little bit, the, the price to quality ratio was not as good as we'd like, but um, no doubt it's a quality wine. Um, is it a second growth wine? Would, is this what people would think is a second growth wine? Probably not in the league of, um, for, my, for me in terms of enjoyment compared to uh, Lieva Lacasse or De Cru Bucayou. Um, but getting there, uh, it's not a bad wine. I wouldn't say this is something that I would uh, say is not a growth wine. This is definitely a growth wine. It's just um, maybe it's the vintage or Yeah, um, it's a good wine. Um, it's just, it def I, to me, it's not of the second growth potential. It's kind of, there is some, in my mind, a little bit of confusion, what this wine is trying to tell me. Um, so struggling a bit with it in terms of what it's trying to tell me. I've got a little bit of cork in my mouth, sorry. Um, but, you know, I enjoy it. And um, I would say... Compared to my previous uh, views of this wine, I would say it has elevated my view slightly. Um, I would consider it uh, a wine to watch out for, and I would be very interested in tasting some older vintages, but better vintages. Maybe I would go uh, with the 18 or the 15 or the 10 or the 9. I'd be really interested to taste those vintages. So that's kind of my assessment right now. Um, I would, despite what I said previously in this video, uh, I might stay away from off vintages of brand Cantonac. I would buy, um, recent, um, really good vintages of brand Cantonac. I think that would be the way to go and then just watch for this winery, uh, because I think there is some potential here. Hope you've enjoyed this, uh, video review and until next time, happy drinking.